Trade policy refers to the different ways in which governments try to influence their country's imports and exports. If a country is running a large current account or balance of payments deficit, the government will probably want to take corrective action by adjusting trade policy to encourage exports and to discourage imports. I'm here at Cromco, just outside of Cape Town, which packs fruit and exports it all over the world. Let's see how it all works. Has South Africa always been a free market like this? No, it hasn't been. It was a single channel control regulated environment pre-1997 and uh, all the product had to go to one big uh, control board and they will export it on your behalf. That changed since 1997 and you can either use one of the big established exporters or you can do it yourself. In our case we do it uh, ourselves. We believe that we don't want to have in any interference between ourselves and the market. That must have been quite an adjustment from subsidies to a free market. Yes, no, there was. It was quite a tough phase. Uh, the industry went through a consolidation phase. Quite a lot of farms and uh, companies like these went belly up. You know, there wasn't enough profit to sustain the kind of environment that they were used to. Um, now it's 10 years later, and I believe that we only start now to be very, very competitive. So it, we did went through a very bad patch, yeah. Do you get any government assistance, such as subsidies or tax breaks? Yeah, on certain levels, but, but in general we are a free economy in terms of exporting. Uh, most of the European countries have got uh, subsidies in place. They get government subsidies if they want to, for instance, take on new capital projects. They will get uh, government subsidies to assist them there. And then again, there's also tariffs that they put in place. There's a specific time period when their local crop comes in. And uh, if I still want to export into Europe from that specific day, I would have to pay additional tariff. We can put a competitive product in terms of pricing and quality onto the UK and European supermarket shelf. Uh, we can do that without any large government subsidies or government intervention. I think it is a free market that we are currently in for the past 10 years that helped us or assisted us to get to a point where we are competitive. Um, I believe that the labour is very expensive, so I believe it is more expensive for them as well. This interview showed me a few things. I saw that our fruit exporters are efficient, well-run businesses. As the man said, they don't really need assistance or incentives to compete internationally. They are competing already. Subsidies should rather be given then to new exporters, just trying to establish themselves and get the first footing in international markets. I also had to wonder if the subsidies given to European farmers by their governments made them more competitive or more dependent. Although most economic theory favours free international trade, many countries still have some trade barriers in place to try to protect local industries. And, according to one World Trade Organization agreement, one of the few methods approved for use as a trade barrier is the tariff. A tariff is an import duty, or import tax, that is charged or levied on imports. But why would a country want to levy a tariff on imported goods? Well, one reason is to make imported goods more expensive for consumers, usually to prop up local producers of similar products. Now, as a consumer, you may say, hang on, I want access to those goods. They're the most competitively priced and better quality. The theory of free international trade would agree with you. According to the theories of absolute and comparative advantage, the country that can most efficiently produce a good should be the one that gets to make it. Imposing tariffs on imported goods creates the illusion that domestically manufactured goods are competitive in price compared to their international rivals. The danger is that domestic producers will continue to produce inefficiently, which means they're wasting resources. Having said all that, there are still good reasons to make imported goods more expensive. We have not seen a narrowing of the gap internationally between the North and the South, the wealth gap. My sense is that we have to go back to the drawing boards and look at an international trade and industrial policy model 
where, where economies that are comparable in their stages of development create trade blocks. And within such trade blocks, there is a measure of free competition. But South African clothing manufacturers can never and will never be competitive against clothing manufacturers in China if one unpacks the environment within which each one operates. It is just a very, very unlevel playing field. One of the main arguments for the use of tariffs is called the infant industry argument. When certain types of industries are first started off, it's impossible for them to compete with more established competitors in other countries. There are inefficiencies and mistakes are made and there's room for improvement. It takes quite a while before these industries start making money. In the early stages of trying to establish a new industry, it's often called an infant industry. It must still grow up and learn and become efficient. In this growing stage, the industry needs to be protected from more established overseas competition, which is more efficient and well run, able to supply their products at very competitive prices. The new local infant industry cannot compete with these more efficient industries, well not yet anyway. Once the industry is established, then it should be able to make a profit without the help or protection from government. The infant industry argument proposes that no one should be denied the chance to develop and to grow into a self-sustaining productive entity. When it reaches this stage, the government should stop the protection and stop taxing the imported products. Well, that's the theory. A common flaw in the infant industry approach, however, is that the protection continues after they've grown. And this goes against the whole idea of free and fair trade. Even though the local industry grows up, the tariffs on imported products from overseas competitors stay in place, either because government is unaware that the local industry has become competitive, or, in more sinister circumstances, sometimes even when they do know. Of course, the producer doesn't complain that it's free to carry on charging the higher prices, even if it's become more efficient, and government may be reluctant to stop the tariffs too, because these are a source of revenue. The result is, though, that the consumer ends up paying the higher price caused by the tariff, while the now matured producer enjoys the benefit of a protection that is no longer justified. Let's try to understand this